as we all trust the Lord to come in a mighty way, in a special way. It starts off with the declaration. It's about God moving. So if we must see revival and the revival that will continue, we better cling, 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 so that new life can be new life. Hallelujah, we thank God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your mercies and goodness. Thank you for watching over us, Lord. Thank you again for giving us an opportunity to share your word, helping us to know who we, that we are, what you've said of us and what you've made us, Lord. Help us to have this understanding. Let it not be stolen away from our hearts and minds, but help us to be confident knowing who we are in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have, again, I say I want to introduce myself. I'm Isaac, Pastor Isaac uh, of Christ Called Church, Umonja, Nairobi. Uh, Jesus Christ is Lord in my life. And again, I rejoice to be before you this day. And I want us to continue to have, to not have understanding of our identity in Christ. We started by saying that the Bible declares that we are sons of God. And we should not just say by word. We, many Christians, we are quick to say things without meaning what we say. But I, want, I, I desire that we ponder, meditate on this fact that we are sons of God. Not sons of a particular member of parliament, not a, sons of a particular political leader, not, a, not sons of a particular uh, millionaire or billionaire, so to say, or any other popular person. But we are sons of God Most High, Elohim, Him that created the whole universe. The Bible also says that we are part of His body. He's made us through Christ to be part of his body. And we also saw that we are new creation. We are no longer the people we used to be. There is change. We, we have been made a flesh new creation. Children of God most high. Operating at a different level than where, what we were operating in before. Oh, having been rifted up together with Christ Jesus in the heavenly places. Ruling and governing over with him. It's an awesome thing to know this and to understand this. Today, I want us to continue to share more of these references or titles that have been given by the Lord according to the scriptures. Today, I want us to look to the fact that we are the beloved of God. We are not just sons and children of God, that, but the Bible says we are the beloved, you know. <laughs> when you talk of a beloved, it's that you're a particular person. You have, you're different from the others. You, there's something special about you. Let's look at the scriptures in the book of John 16 and verses 27. The Bible says, For the Father himself loves you because you've loved me and and you have believed that I came forth from God. In the King James, it say that we are the beloved of God. The Lord loves us. Today, there are many people who just really look forward to have such a title or reference that I love you. Ha. Huh. I love you. Just being told that to make all the difference. But now again, we are not being told by human beings who can fail us because many times, many women know this, you've been cheated. Somebody has said he loves you, but he didn't mean it. But when God says he loves you, he means, he means it. He loves you. God loves us. Do not believe the lies of the devil that we, the Lord does not love us. He, God loves us. He created us to love us. That is our portion. He loves us. He confirms the same uh, in the book of John 15. As the Father loved me, also have loved you. Abide in my love. I also have loved you. 
We are the beloved of Jesus. Jesus is God. We are the beloved of our Lord Jesus. We are not nobodies. We're not just any person. We are beloved. In John chapter 17 and 23, the Bible says, I in them and you in me, that you may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me. I have loved them as you have loved me. The Lord loves us. Jesus loves us. And being loved by God is totally different than being loved by human beings. It's good to understand that God can never fail. His promise is sure. He cannot waver. He is not God that changes. He does not go with moods. Human beings, when they say, they say I love you, but they, after some time you find they are moody. They no longer show that love that they promised. They, they go with the season. Some men show real love when they, they, they have money in their pockets. When they are broke, they, they, they cool down. They no longer show that love. When, we, when sometimes I have had people who have been seen to be really seasoning with love, sizzling with love, and after some time you find that they are divorcing. You wonder, where is this kind of love that we used to talk about? Where has it gone to? This is not about God. God loves us with an eternal, with a, a sure love and eternal. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us, as he has said. And we, the Bible says that we know that the Father loves us. The Holy Spirit loves us. Jesus Christ loves us. We are the beloved of God. And this gives me a lot of encouragement. It gives me a lot of hope that I'm not a, 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 a nobody. I am special. And nobody, everybody loves to be recognized, to, to be loved by somebody. You can tell a person who is loved, they behave differently from people who suffer rejection. A woman who is loved by her spouse, you can tell by her character. Even her, the, the way she behaves, her mannerisms, you can tell she's, she's loved, she's appreciated. Because she has that confidence. She knows, she looks forward to going home in the evening. She looks forward to being there with the, the spouse. But when there is um, there's, there's that deception or there's rejection, you can see even the way people behave. But now we as Christians should have this understanding that we are beloved of God so that we, are care, we walk like them and behave like them and be confident like them that are the beloved of God. The... Our Father will never harass us. He can never, we cannot be harassed. We cannot be harassed by the enemy because we are the beloved of God. In Psalms 105 and verse 60, the Bible says, Moreover, he called for a famine in the land. He destroyed all the provision of bread. Our God will not allow us to suffer. We cannot just suffer like that. He is faithful. He will, not, he will not allow the enemy to come and destroy us because he loves us. He loves us. He will not allow us to suffer shame because he, suffer, he loves us. He will protect us. It's good to have this understanding. And may God help us to have this understanding in our day-to-day -day life and know for sure what God says. He means it. We continue to say number five. What is our identity is that we are brothers of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should start introducing ourselves as such. Uh, I know people who have strong or so, so to say, popular brothers or known people, they want to identify themselves with people who are popular. And when you introduce yourself, you want to say, uh, I'm so-and-so, I'm a brother to the, because you want to be recognized and appreciated. You say the brother maybe to the, to, to the flan, the so-and-so, the manager, the managing director, the senior police officer, the political figure. You want to have, you have that identity because it's, it's, that's, that's where you belong. But now we are talking of us being 
the brothers of Jesus. Brothers of Jesus. What does that mean? Let's look at the book of Matthew 12, 49 and 50. The Bible says, And he stretched out his hand towards his disciples and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and a sister and a mother. We are the brothers of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if so, we should also expect that being our senior brother, he will protect us. He's our big brother. And I remember when you were growing up, mm -hmm, some of us grew with big brothers. And we celebrated the protection of big brothers. If especially your brother was, uh, you go to a high school, and your brother is in that school. Those days when kids would be monorized and harassed in from one, and especially, if you happen to have had a big brother who was known to be tough, or even just associated with one of those big guys, you knew you were safe. Oh, I remember there was one man in our school. He seemed very rough. And... He was feared by his peers and others. And if you identified as a form one to have a position with him, you know you are safe. All your issues will be handled with care. No other boy will harass you. No one will harass you because you belong, you're a brother. And this should encourage us that Jesus Christ has overcome Satan. Huh. He has worked on the devil. And so, being his brothers, as long as we walk with him, we have admitted, we have agreed to be called his brothers, we shall, he'll also protect us and fight for us. We'll be saved in his hands. The Bible says in Hebrews 2, 11, that for both he who sanctifies those who are being sanctified, sanctified all of one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren or brothers. Jesus is not ashamed to call us brothers. He's happy to call us our brothers. And so we have a big brother, and not just an ordinary brother. He's, a, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's God. We, we are brothers of God, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And not only God, the Bible tells us what he has done for us. He has paid the price for us. And so, in him, we have victory. In him, we will overcome because he overcame. In the book of Romans 8, 29, the Bible says, From whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Jesus Christ is our firstborn. He's our big brother. We else, or else, we are his younger brothers and sisters. And so when the life tries to harass us, we can call upon our big brother to walk, to work, to work on those people or those uh, uh, entities that are trying to work against us. That's how it was in those days. We were a big sister in school that any other person tried to threaten you. And especially if you have a tough sister or brother, you just point Point, point your sister to the person and tell, work on, work on him. You don't even have to bother much. You don't have to fight so much. It's not you to fight. You just need to, to tell your sister, work, work on him. And I think that's all her. And that's what we need to understand as children of God, that we are brothers to Jesus, and Jesus is there to fight for us and work with us and to help us to get victory over all the works of Satan. He is the older one, and he'll care for his siblings who are we in him. We are blessed because Jesus is our brother. And moving on, number five, we have another identity. Is that the Bible says we are the dwelling place of God. Masani, Kwakswahili. We are the dwelling place of God. Again, this is awesome. Let's read the book of Ephesians 2 and verses 20. 
um, we can read 22. In whom also you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Again, this is awesome to know that through Jesus, we the Gentiles are being made part of, we, we are the dwelling place of God. The Bible says that he will come and make indwell in us. They will come and make lodging in us. Dwell in us. Jesus Christ the Lord, uh, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, they'll come and indwell us. And so we should know that we, 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 when you move around, we are not anybody's. There's somebody who said, I love this, I like his faith. He said, I cannot even be involved in an accident. He's a Christian. That's his faith. He can, I cannot have an accident. I cannot be involved in an accident. Why? Because the Lord will not allow it. I carry my Father. I carry God, Jehovah. I carry Jesus Christ, the Lord. I carry the Holy Spirit. They, they dwell me. They are in me. How can they allow it? Well, his faith. But in the same light, there are some things we should uh, not expect to happen in our lives because we, the Lord dwells in us. And as long as we, 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 we're careful with him, there are things which will never happen in our lives. In the book of John 14 and verses 23, 14 and verses 23, the Bible says, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and will come to him and make our home with him. Hmm. But Jesus made this promise. All we need is love Jesus. And keep his word. When you do that, him and the Father will come and indwell us. It will be their home, their habitation. What an awesome thing. It's very important to know this, brethren, and those who listen to this, that because, because we have received him, he no longer, we are not looking to God that is afar off, you know, sometimes I think, especially those who have learned geography, you imagine a father is coming from some, 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 some big, uh, some a planet, you imagine heavenly planet from far, uh, maybe Jupiter, very far, Pluto's very far, maybe some galaxy somewhere. Oh, no, 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 he lives in us. And I remember the testimony of Yogi Cho. That one time he was asked by one of the members of his church, when his church was starting, he asked, what, where, what is the destiny? What is the, where, where is the location? What is the address of Jesus Christ that I may, I may write him a, a, a letter? This woman was innocently asking, this man you're saying the Savior, who, where does he stay? Where is him? And, and the, the late Yogi Cho was wondering, I say heaven, what would I say? If I'm here, I'm saying he's up here. Uh, I mean Kenya. What when I'm in South Africa? What will the South African show? Because it's not down there, place in Europe, up there. Well, he show, and that's when he got the revelation that he dwells in him. They live in us, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's why sometimes we should even be careful. The, the, some of the songs we sing is as if we are calling fa our Father from very far. You know, very far. Come, we are pleading. Are you hearing? We are calling upon you. Come from far, you know. And even when you sing some songs, it's care be careful to realize that he is in us. We are not looking for him. And similarly, if you know how uh, the house of the dwelling place of a president, the way it is protected, the state house or the white house, for America, you know the protection that is there. We should expect that kind of protection to be upon us because we carry the king of kings, not just anybody. The king of kings and the lord of lords. And these are some of the testimonies. These are some of the things, we, the creations we must be making on daily basis as we pray. That we carry the king of kings and we, we, we make it um, known within our spirits and ourselves that we are protected. And that's why a Christian should know, I'm not saying you should risk your life, but you cannot go worried all over every place you, you're looking around. Look at the president. 
When President Zinke is walking, he doesn't even look around whether somebody is pursuing him or somebody is... Uh, no, no, no. He's confident. He has a security detail. That is a, it's, it's their bother. It is their bother to, to protect him. So he walks. Sometimes he said they are putting them at risk because he'll behave in a way and they see we are being overtaken by our ability to protect him because he behaves in a way that uh, maybe uh, he, he's risking his life. But he's not, pro he's not worried. How often uh, Christians, and uh, I'd want to encourage Christians, don't, don't pass messages of, to, to show fear. Oh, a, a new way, they are, new way the thieves are stealing, the way new way they are doing ABC. Some of those things don't pass by in WhatsApp. Don't, because you don't know who you are. There are many things that could have happened to us, but they don't happen to us because we carry our Father, our Lord, our, the Holy Spirit, our helper. We carry them. And if truly we carry them, we expect protection. Angels of God, ministers, they are ministers, they are around us. They are just yet as it was in the times of Elisha. He saw the chariots. They are surrounding him. He, the, he saw, the, his, his servant saw it with his own eyes and said, there were many, many more than the heathen, the, the, the chariots of the people, who, of the king who are trying to... We have more than that. We carry the king of kings and the Lord of... So there are angels around us. And unless the only way to deny them this opportunity is when we don't recognize and appreciate them. But one moment we realize whom we are carrying, we should know that we have awesome protection. Not even like president can get that. I, I remember ministering to us and I said, one angel is able to kill... 185,000 people. What if there are two? If there are 10, they can, the whole battalion, I don't know many how nations can have over 200,000 soldiers. We are, prote we are more protected than any president of any nation because we carry the king of kings. Hallelujah. Um, Daniel chapter 10 and verses 21, Daniel 10, it says, But I will tell you what is noted in the scripture in, of truth. No one upholds me against this except Michael, your prince. You read the story of Daniel when the, he was sent his report and it was hidden in the heavenlies. The angel Michael had to come to ensure the delivery. This, this is what we're saying as a children of God. There is a Michael, the king of all angels, or there's the senior of the angels. He had to come. This is the kind of ministry that we have. It's only that it was revealed to Daniel. Many of us have not known, but the angels of God have been fighting for us. They have been walking over, around us without our knowledge and understanding. And we should have this confidence and know that we are the dwelling place of God. And so we are protected. You don't have to keep that sharp panga or that big... Uh, uh, or something to protect yourself, a knife and all that. You don't have to have that spear. There's one who is taking care of you all the time, all the days. We are children of God. In uh, Psalms 37 and verses 4, the Bible says, I plead my cause, O Lord, with those who strive with me. This is David. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of children and, back and buckler and stand up for my help. Also draw the spear. David knew that there was full of weapons with our father. And stop those who pursue me. Say unto my soul, I am your salvation. Let those who put, let those be put to shame and brought to dishonor who seek after my life. Let those be turned back and brought to confusion who brought my heart. Let them be like chaff before the wind. And then the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and sleepily, and let the age of the Lord pursue them. As it was with David, King David, it is still again happening today. We are protected by God. In the armory of God, there are so many weapons, so many weapons to protect us because we are the dwelling place of Jehovah. The only thing is, if we defile the environment, the Lord will not dwell there anymore. But so far as we make the habitation comfortable for him, 
He will dwell in us and will enjoy his protection and his provision because we carry him. He has chosen that we carry him and the, our Lord Jesus. Let's, let's pray as we finish. Father, we thank you and we bless you and exalt you. Thank you that you have chosen to make us your dwelling place. We honor you. We give you glory. We adore you, Lord. Have your way in our lives. Have your way. Teach us. Let this revelation be so true in us to know how protected and taken care of we are by you because we carry you and help us to be free from anxieties of life. But celebrate our calling as children of God, as a dwelling place of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.